Hi, and welcome to tutorial number four for processing. Um, I think uh, we've done a very, very good job in the last three tutorials. Uh, we've learned about conditional statements, variables, integer variables, random numbers, float variables, and um, all these data types are really, really important in order to understand when to use an integer or to use a float or a double and pretty much what to do with those conditional statements and how they can help us interact with our animations in processing. Today we're going to look at a new function called key press <clears throat> and uh, determine which key to press. Okay, So when I press a key, any key on my keyboard, I can actually see the animation different or I can set a condition if the key is pressed. So it's very very simple. We are going to start with a very simple animation and you guys will have to develop um, a certain task. Okay? So I'm gonna start my my program with uh, with the normal size, the one that I always use, and the white background. Okay? You don't have to use the white background. And I'm going to make a conditional statement. <clears throat> if key pressed, now processing understands that key press returns a true or false value. This if key press means that if I press any key on the keyboard, he will enter this conditional statement. Okay? So I'm going to make, I'm going to open and close the brackets, and any key that I press on the keyboard will um, do this. Okay, so let's make a really quick example. So if I press any key from the keyboard, I want to change the background. So if I press any key from the keyboard, I'm just going to change the background to a random color every time I press a key. So this is a very helpful tool when I'm pressing some keys. So let's see how it works. I should get a change in my background. Okay, so that is pretty much what I do. Any key is pressed, I can change the color. Okay, let me take this away. And now I'm going to set another condition inside this one. Okay, and this is called a nested condition. A nested condition is an if inside an if statement. So if the key is pressed, and or if after the key is pressed, that key is equal to B, then I want to make something else. Okay? So I create a conditional nested statement. Okay? They're nested because one is inside the other. So if the key is pressed, and of course the key is the B, the letter B then I want to create, I don't know, a triangle, okay? We'll see something in a minute because um, I'll show you, if you don't have clear what is the function of what you're looking for, I'll show you the website of processing where you can get all the references, okay? So the triangle. And the triangle, let's say, all it also has four parameters, but I'm not sure. What I'm going to do is I'm and see the processing website, and I'm going to look at the reference. And in reference, I can see different 2D primitives like arc, ellipse, line, point, quad, and triangle. If I click on triangle, I can see all the parameters that are needed. So you can see I have the the first point, the um, the x coordinate first point, the y coordinate first point, x coordinate of the second point. So we need six parameters, okay? And that's how we draw the triangle. So I'm going to try to draw a triangle, and I'm going to say that it starts in. Um, 100 by 100, that's my first point, then it's going to go to 200 by 200, that's my second point, and then I think it needs to go 
up. So it's going to go to 100 by uh, 300. Let's see what happens there. Okay, so I need six parameters. I need six parameters to create a triangle. Okay, let's see what happens. Right now, if I press a key, nothing is happening. Okay, but if I press the B, I create a triangle. Every time I'm creating a triangle in the same point. Okay, if I press the B, okay, um, key, then I'm going to get a triangle. Okay? Now I can change this because remember that they're different points. Okay? And I create another triangle. Right? If I wanted to create different sizes of my triangle or different points, then I can just choose a random number here. Let's see what happens. And I press the B. Then I'm creating. Remember that two of my points are still, but two, but one of them, this point is changing. If I increase this number, maybe to 600, I can have a bigger, a bigger scope. So as, I, as you can see, this animation is creating triangles with one with two points uh, uh, constant, okay? So this is very simple. If I want to change the color of those triangles every time, I can remember that I can choose random colors for each random triangle. Okay. And I also want to change the other point. So two points are going to be completely random in this case, not just one. Let's see what happens. The idea is that you play with this and you start getting different animations. Here I'm, I'm turning two different points. So you can see the animation change with the triangle. So you're getting a spike, a spike figure or a spike graph just by changing randomly two points and by leaving the key pressed. If I have or I want to set another key, I just need to create another condition. Let's see it's R. And in this case, I don't want to draw rectangles. I, want, I don't want to draw triangles. I want to draw rectangles. And in this case, I'm going to make a random position for my rectangle. Okay, remember that rectangles have four parameters. And I want to make just um, 100 by 100 squares. Or, yeah, squares. If I press the R button. this case, if I press the B, I'm going to continue getting those random triangles. But if I press the R, I get rectangles. B for triangles and R for rectangles. So I can play with all the keys that I'm pressing on my animation and get some really interesting art. Okay? Very good. Okay. So your task for this tutorial is going to be the following. If I press the letter T, I'm going to get triangles. So if I press the letter T, I'm going to get triangles. I'm going to get blue triangles. Okay. If I press the letter um, C, I'm going to get red circles. And if I press the letter R, I'm going to get green uh, rectangles, okay? So I have T for triangles, 
C for circles, and R for rectangles. This is going to be your task. Okay? So good luck with that, and uh, see you on the next tutorial.